how. How is a character even more of a douchebag than Eok? Eok was already a fucking dumbass. This man's like, Banzai! Banzai! With Naze's death in the last episode of Gundam. And that man, oh, I, I wish... I wish some really, really miserable shit on this man. But how can how can a character but be an even bigger piece of shit than Eok? Jazly, I I don't know if I should commend you or if I should, you know, just be straight up in rage mode. Because this character, Jazly, is he infuriates me in a different way compared to to Eok. Eok is just a dumbass. Like, that man is a straight-up fucking dumbass. However, Jazly, what he did in this episode was scummy. It was so scummy. Like, it was just complete disgusting what he did to one of the ships that were taking place in this episode. And also, a character that finally managed to find happiness got completely fucked over. Let's talk about... The death, okay? I I, I don't want to go into complete rage mode, because honestly, my reasons for raging against Eok is just because of how much of a dumbass he is. He was just a complete dumbass. However, I am very, very mad compared to last week's episode just because of the way it was done. But I can understand the reasons for this. I, I can see where the character is going, where Jazzly's coming about this. Like, he wants to gain more power, and so he's doing this crusty shit to initiate a war with Tekadon and himself. Which I understand that. But, oh my god, the way that was done was just such a big middle finger to us, the viewers. I'm like, are you serious right now? Like, this man, this man was like... An evil piece of shit. It's like he saw the script of the series. He's like, mmm, everybody's gonna like this. You see, you see the, this couple right here. You see, you know, Akihiro and Lafta. They're having, you know, this nice couple going on this episode. He's looking at the script. The script. He's like, huh. Apparently, they're saying that Eok is a worse villain, like a worse villain than me. Okay, okay, okay. I, I see this. I see you. I see. I see you, Gundam. So he's like, you know what? I want to shoot laughter. I, I want to shoot her in fucking cold blood. Kill her ass. When she has had a very good moment throughout this episode. And we finally have a ship selling. He's like, I want to fuck that shit up. Oh yes, I want to fuck all that shit up. Comes in here. Kills her. And, the, the, oh my god. Like, what got me was that the entire episode was focused on the funeral. Which started off sad. But then the middle portion, it got into more of a happier tone. It was where Akihiro and Laughter, they were having like a moment. They were having a very good moment. They were, you know, spending time together. They were alone. And, you know, it's kind of like we saw the ship selling. The romance was flying. You're like, oh my god, this is adorable. Even on Twitter, that's what I was saying. I'm like, it's so fucking adorable. Like, it's adorable seeing these characters together. And we've seen them interacting constantly throughout the entirety of the season and last season. And I'm just glad to see See that type of progression but then the curse of Gundam the curse of this series and I've noticed something every time there is a spark of romance in this series it ends up in tragedy why is that why does that keep happening why is it every time there could be a relationship it ends in tragedy has anyone else noticed this I mean look what happened to Naze what could happen now in this episode? I mean, what the fuck? I mean, I, I mean, if this is any indication, what really scares me out of all of this, like, there's something that really scares me. It's not the fact that now we know that romance might be completely freaking cursed in this series, but in the exact same episode when this shit went down, Akihiro and Laughter were having their moment, we have it to where Mika and Atra have a moment as well. Oh, fuck. That is not good. That is not good. If that, like, if this episode and last episode is any indication of what romance means in this series, then Atra's dead as hell. Like, oh, she dead. Like, she is dead. Like, she is beyond dead. And if it's not her, Mika is beyond dead. Now, obviously... We kind of already expect Mika to most likely die before the series is done. So, if Gundam wants to, you know, spin us for a loop, 
I can see Akra dying. And if they really want to fuck us over, they'll both die. Now, that, that might be where the path, you know, Gundam might want to take. Because let's look at what the dialogue was about, okay? Just the dialogue alone just screams death lag for Mika or Akra's character. Mika and Atra, they have a conversation, all that, and they talk about children and how, like, the children that, you know, Mika saw today when they were at the funeral, is that the children look a lot like Naze, and it's like, oh, so that's how children are, you know, what the point of children is, you know, it's like passing on the legacy of the person, and as soon as he says, he's like, you know, you want to make one, and... Atra's like, wait, what? And then Atra admits her love for him, and then he's like, you want to make one with me? I mean, the way it goes about that, I'm like, whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Am, am I seeing this progression between these two characters, like this romance progression? And this is obviously before, you know, laughter died. Like, before she got wrecked and shot. Oh, oh my god. Before she got killed. We have that scene, and you're like, holy hell, another ship is selling, like, this is actually happening, but then after thinking about it, like, wait a minute, to continue on your legacy, ain't that a fucking death flag? That, that's a death flag, like, that is a major death flag, if it's not for Mika, it is for Atra, that, that is a death flag, a very big one, and I'm like, oh no. Oh no, they're they're gonna do some shit like this, aren't they? They're gonna do some of that heinous shit, aren't they? And then we saw what happened to yeah. So the moral of the story, I think, right now, after watching this episode of Gundam, if you have a ship, okay, if you have a ship and you see some romance going on in this series, I think nine times out of ten, you know what? No, fuck it. Ten out of ten times, most likely it's going to end in tragedy. One of the characters are going to die, which is what we saw in this episode. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, Gundam this week. I'm angry at the villain, but at the same time, I'm not angry to the point to where I'm just mad because of how stupid, because Eok is just brain dead. But this villain, Jazly, he pisses me off. Oh, I am royally mad. But the way he is... He is a villain that I can understand. His motives are to gain power. He wants to stir the pot. He wants to be someone that starts all these problems before he can get powerful. And that's kind of what his whole reasoning was it for. He wants to piss off Tekadon. He's trying to do that before they will initiate against him. And then he'll fight them. And then he'll drag in the big head honcho. And then he can move into power. That's kind of his entire goal. So I can understand why he's doing this. It doesn't mean I agree with him. But I understand why he's doing it. And so as a person or as a villain, I think I'm just not as annoyed with him, but I'm I'm pretty livid. I, I I'm seeing fucking red after that romance I saw. Calm down a little bit after I saw it, but yeah. Anyways, episode overall of Gundam this week. It was a it was a sad episode. Yeah, it was a sad one. I mean, it started off heavy, it went lighthearted, and it was like fuck you towards the end. It just like bent you over the table and like fuck you. <laughs> That's exactly what it did. So. Yeah, what a way to start a morning. Yeah, I see you, Gundam. I see you. You all have a wonderful day or night wherever you live. Please be safe. Chibi out.